Yo, what is up? Uh, welcome to episode one of our podcast. We don't know the name yet, but we'll decide that soon. And uh, we wanted to make this because me and my friend Michael, we've known each other since back in high school. And we often have conversations a lot about music and just other stuff that can kind of get unhinged. The, the conversations can get pretty crazy. Uh, so we just thought it would be super entertaining to just record this and have like a completely unfiltered, well, maybe not uh, completely unfiltered, but uh, have a podcast where we can just chat about this like music stuff and more stuff. Um, feel like the the synergy between us is pretty good. So, hey, well, I didn't mean it like that, though. Okay, so don't don't get it. Yeah, I mean, you came at us straight, you know, this month. So, yeah, yeah I'm, no need to I'm worry. straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very brave of me. Um, but yeah, I am. I'm straight. Well, no, back to the podcast. Well, well, you're 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 confusing me. You, <laughs> this is how they get you. <laughs> how they get you. The media. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just wanted to talk about like music stuff and way more. And honestly, I think we can just get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is what is the name of our podcast? Pod- <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I came up with a few ideas, thoughtless. I thought thoughtless, thoughtless would be a good one. Oh, but um, like T H O T thoughtless. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, oh my god. Be... And then we can bro, we can tap into the, like the Andrew Tate market as well as the rap market. Yeah, I don't know. Thoughtless. To be honest, that was the only one I had. Uh yeah. Damn respect. I mean, maybe the Andrew Tate market is what we need, but I feel like that might be too based for like, you know, it could be for... too controversial, yeah. Too contra- too political. <laughs> uh, okay, no, I, I like that. Thoughtless. Um, I had some ideas. All right. Okay. So I have this idea for uh, to call it No Bars Podcast. Like, no bars. No bars. I like that. Because we got no bars. Like, you know, sometimes the, the freestyle game, like, you know, needs a little bit of improvement. And it's like, no bars. Like, there's no there's no limits to like, you know, what's gonna no, happen. What we discuss, yeah, exactly, that's exactly. Good. Okay, I like that. So I really like that. And then I looked it up. It already exists, and it's already there is already like a no bars podcast or like no bars something else like uh that already talks about like hip hop and music stuff. Damn. So, bro, we we need that search engine optimization. You know what I'm saying? We can just get bigger than them, and then you know make it our own oh we can acquire them exactly we, we need to think like a true businessman see donald trump he would know what to do <laughs> okay well, you need like well, yeah sorry i need i need to tone down the politicalness of the the first episode this is... i mean you came out as straight during pride month <laughs> you're promoting <laughs> trump <laughs> <laughs> no whoa 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 well, i'm not promoting. I mean, I'm just I'm just, saying. he's a guy that exists so <laughs> whoa. whoa that's right yeah. Oh, oh, big! I can feel <laughs> the liberal media cracking down upon me as we. Can... <laughs> whoa, whoa. I, I need to chill. I need to chill. Get vaccinated. <laughs> That's the name of the podcast. Get vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just you. Sometimes when you say something super based, you just have to offset it by something like that people can get behind. So like, oh, get like you just say like Andrew Tate did nothing. Wrong. Get vaccinated. <laughs> get the I vaccine. See. Yeah, the political game. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. I'm I'm somewhat of a politician, man. This is this actually this podcast is me venturing into this territory a little bit. Like I'm I'm building a name for myself. Like just how Donald Trump. Uh, uh, I don't mean to keep using his <laughs> name as an example. You know, it's purely coincidence. But like you know, he made a a name for himself in the business space. I'm somewhat of a businessman, entrepreneur myself. So I'm making a name for myself, and I feel like if we get all the rap people, then. Uh, Truly, anything is possible. Then again, Kanye tried to do that too, and didn't. Yeah, look what work. happened. Yeah, he lost Adidas, whatever yeah. that J.P. Morgan deal was. Yeah, yeah. See, he, it would have worked better if he he's not the the difference between me and Kanye is like, well, we're both geniuses, but uh, <laughs> but you know, I got that. I'm a software engineer. Okay, I'll like get behind that and I'll infiltrate the the the, the black the 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 oh, <laughs> oh my <Damn>. <laughs> all right you're back oh, okay i cut out for a second <laughs> big tech Oof, to shut yeah me down. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Uh, but yeah, bro, let's stay yeah. off the black community, Nauman. Don't bring that up again. Whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> <laughs> There'll just be a random edit from before to me saying oh. that. <laughs> oh, dude, I- I'm glad you're in this podcast, man. I could get away with so much. <laughs> <laughs> so no yeah, bars. Name. Yeah, no taken. bars, but that's taken. Um, okay, this one, I think, I think we got a, a winner or one of the winners. Okay. Rap rejects. Rap rejects. Rap rejects. It, it rolls off the tongue. It's like a alliteration, you know, rap rejects. Uh, it's not taken. I checked. Okay. And um, it's simple, like, and I guess memorable. None of these rapper people are trying to listen to our opinion, like our, like our nerdy ass opinions about music. I, I kind of like, like that. Uh, rap yeah, reject. Thank you, thank you. Or we could do rap. <laughs> this might be rap. too cringe or like trying too hard but like rap riz because you know we got that riz rap riz <laughs> but it might, it, it it's might... funny but it, i feel like it would be hard to build on that you know? yeah and also like uh, there's a risk that like in six months people are not really saying that anymore riz. yeah <laughs> and it's just like oh it's like rap dab whoa <laughs> <laughs> like if we Imagine this podcast, we're coming up with it in 2017 and we're like, dude, rap dab. I'm telling you, dab is like awesome. All the kids are doing it. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, maybe, maybe we stay away from the uh, Gen Z vocabulary (laughs) or just uh, things that might fall off. So, but yeah, I like rap rejects if that's cool with you. Yeah. Rap rejects. And shit, we might change the name every podcast. (laughs) Maybe this is a recurring Maybe it's a recurring bit, like every time we talk about it. This is a thought fluid podcast, so you never know. Damn. And now you brought thought again, and now I'm liking thoughtless again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no. I think uh, thoughtless might be a little bit too insulting and degrading to women. So I think we should just stick to rap rejects because we care about women. Okay, yeah. We yeah. respect women. We respect the, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the pride you, movement. You, you sounded I, doubtful for a bit at the beginning. You're like... <laughs> I was like, we respect women. You're like, speak for yourself. (laughs) All right, but let's be real. All women? No, I'm joking. (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa, This is this is dangerous, dude. Podcasts are the way that every person of influence like ever gets canceled. Like true. Either that or Twitter. So uh at least we (laughs) at least no one knows us yet. So like, you know, if you're coming up on the podcast, it's all good. (laughs) Unless we like, you know have professional careers in the future and this comes back in like a job interview oh yeah. my god but i, I doubt they would just, dig I, that deep i can just already see like a recruiter interviewing me and then they're like so uh what do you think about taylor swift and i was like oh, oh man like what does that have to do with like software engineering and she's like <laughs> no no it's uh it's a part of our you know behavioral round we want to see if you're a cultural fit <laughs> Oh man. What does that even mean? A cultural fit? Honestly, like... it's like it's an excuse for them to be able to say, like, to get rid of you for like a <laughs> random reason. No, dead ass. Like they're like, oh, sorry, it's just not a cultural fit. Um, or man. or on the other extreme, it's like literally the bar is like all the way down low, and it's literally just to gauge if you're like a normal person and not like Jeffrey Dahmer serial killer. <laughs> Like, I, okay. I think that's usually what it is. Like, they don't want, like, to hire someone who seems, like, unhinged. <laughs> Which, I mean, uh, our, our podcast might not be great for that. <laughs> but uh, but that's shit, why we, we have... Culture. We got culture. We got culture. We have culture, CEO brain, which is make our own shit, you know? Easy, easy. Yeah, okay, rap rejects. We're the rap rejects. What do you want to talk about? You can kick okay. us off. All right. One of the first topics we can get into is what is the, and this is originally my idea. I came up with with it by myself. What is the McDonald's of music? (laughs) (laughs) McDonald's of music. Like, here's what I think is the McDonald's of music. Well, wait, wait, wait. First, we got to explain what, what does that mean? (laughs) The McDonald's of music? What is the McDonald's of music? All right. This is, this is what McDonald's of music is. It's like, it appeals to everyone and but everybody kind of likes it like nobody would say mcdonald's is my favorite restaurant unless you're like yeah yeah yeah, you probably not but um everybody kind of likes it it's so mass appeal it's and they make music for like 
the masses that like anyone could put on and say like oh this is fine so that's the concept of mcdonald's of music who well, is you, your yeah like i think it can also like refer to how like i'm sure you know you've heard of k-pop right yeah if you have ever seen a documentary or like heard about how that industry is run right yeah like they control their people by like what music they can make uh who can join like they right. really like there's not really an indie sort of as far exactly. as i'm aware yeah it's, so it, they, it even they just manufacture right. yeah like they manufacture these talents you know right apparently like all of, like the k-pop people go to the same plastic surgeon because they're almost like those people are the product and they're like made to be this perfectly like digestible thing for the people, which is like kind of crazy. So that's kind of that's kind of McDonald's like. <laughs> and you know what's sad, dude? Like they can't even like in some of their contracts, they're not allowed to date. Like they oh, can't. Really? Yeah. So like they have to be at least publicly single. Cause I guess fans could get upset. I mean, I don't know why, but mm. it's so ridiculous, like that yeah. mindset. No, because they need people to have like the parasocial relationship where they're like, ah, oh, Jimin is going to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> like to me, like K-pop is the most McDonald's of music. As you know what I mean? Like that's McDonald's. Bro, you cannot go to go after K-pop in I know, episode dude, I'm, one. I'm gonna start oh, a war. My. But it's dude. true though. You know, and, you know, K-pop fans are like the the. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna say worse. I, I did. <laughs> it's like the most McDonald's. Like it's a McDonald's as you can get. Yeah. No. I definitely. Uh, I don't agree. Actually, I <laughs> completely disagree. And he's just spouting off, and I have no comment. <laughs> Dude, I have no problem arguing with anyone about that. Damn. No issue because it's, it's just they, true. Until they come to your house and like murder you. <laughs> <laughs> true. I'm I'm watching a show right now. It's called it's like by Donald Glover called Swarm. And it's based on a true story of this hyper obsessed Beyonce fan who just like went crazy. I don't know what the true story is, but in the show, she's like, she's like, oh, I saw what you said about about Beyonce. And then the guy's like, what, what are you talking about? Like as he's about to get like hammered down, and then <laughs> and then she shows him the phone, and then he's like, Bro, Twitter? Like, like on Twitter? And then he gets, he gets, he gets beaten. And he's like, he's like, bro, Twitter? <laughs> Those were his last words. But, bro, uh, we got to be careful. Like, uh, I don't know, bro. You you, you don't want to go after the K-Sans? I mean, I'm yeah. not going after them. I'm just saying their music is manufactured. <laughs> It's nothing personal. It's not nothing about them. Just everything they love and everything they stand for and everything like, they identify with. Like if you like Big Macs, that's okay. But if that's your nation's favorite meal, there's an issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy, bro. All right, bro. I we might have to end. I might need like another host. Like this is, oh, I thought I was saying some pretty base stuff, but like this stuff is gonna get you the most in trouble. Talking about K-pop. <laughs> but do you even know that many people that like K-pop? Like, I know a few. You know what? It's kind of McDonald's. Like, I know a, a, a good amount of people that kind of like it or listen to a K-pop song every once in a while or have it in the rotation. Yeah. I mean, that's it's pretty, Mc, it's pretty McDonald's. But then again, uh, you know, the hate for this is going to be we're going to have a whole two comments. Dude, if you can't <laughs> handle if you can't handle your music being criticized, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's just, totally. just like. Dude, I love making fun of my own music taste. Like, we'll probably get to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But what is your idea? I think you said Taylor Swift. You're going after Taylor Swift. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, uh, yeah, I have some harsh opinions. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into that. But uh, I feel like... Uh, so here's part of the problem, right? Uh, the reason why a lot of these people become McDonald's-like a lot of their original stuff is good. Like the stuff that they came up on, like has to be kind of unique and have like a personality of it to stand out. And then they end up become, but people end up becoming McDonald's. Like, for example, like Drake stuff. Drake is, a, I think, a he's a McDonald's of rap. I, like yeah. he is the McDonald's sure. of rap. He, um, his original stuff, great. 
But then when things kind of go mainstream and pop, then they really water down. Like, bro, what the fuck was 2C Slide, bro? Oh these are, bro, bro, everybody who's listening to this, just understand that these are the lyrics from the rap icon of our generation. These are his lyrics. Right foot up, left <laughs> foot slide, left foot slide, right foot left. <laughs> the masses' favorite rapper, those are the lyrics he's spitting, bro. Like, there's something to be said about, like, when someone becomes so big, they just stop good stuff, and then they they explicitly produce McDonald's. <laughs> like, um, at first, th- they're probably working with the, their music on their own, but then yeah. they get a team of people that their only job is to be like, what kind of music would he make? You know what I mean? Yeah. So they just yeah. keep sending out... I mean, it's not garbage. I mean, it's catchy, but like when an artist really gets their hand involved in uh, an album like Igor, have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah. Like you can tell that was like handcrafted. No, you can tell even with like the concepts they're willing to go into the production style. You can always tell. Yeah. If you want to go mainstream, just do pop. Everyone for some, I I, even I like pop and it's a little embarrassing. Like, right, right, right. Yeah. It's like you hear certain melodies and you're like, I know this is not the best and it's overproduced, but like, damn, that's catchy. Like, I want to, oh, I just want to sit in my bed all day and hear <laughs> right foot slide, left foot down, basically away. I'm going to go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's just so cringe. Taylor Swift, bro. Same thing. I, I think it's hit or miss, honestly, with Taylor Swift. Like, she'll occasionally do a song, I think, that like flexes that like songwriter muscle. Like, I feel like songs and these R&B type uh, artists, like you can really tell when it's uh, like the soul of like the songwriter is coming through where it's like very authentic to them. And I feel like with Taylor songs, it's like, it's a mix. I think I'm sure some of her songs are like deeply thought out, like heartfelt lyrics, but then some, bro, this, her song Karma, I don't know if you know, is like, Karma is a cat purring in my lap. Karma is my boyfriend. And it's just like I've never heard of Karma. No. Yeah. It's like it's like one of her most popular songs off her recent album. People are gonna correct me. They're like, no, actually, that's not the shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just feel like some because she's so big, she just has to make some like pop trash as well. And you know, she even brought Ice Spice on that song. I don't know. Are you, you serious? Know yes yes that's bro. such a random collab that's like case in point that you're making mcdonald's music like she's <laughs> admitting she's like yes i am making mcdonald's music and i'm and i and i just added ketchup on that McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> that's her addition i spots i just added ketchup <laughs> yeah and, and oh she did so bad bro she was like karma is vibes <laughs> this is gonna be controversial bro or probably actually not Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow, Jack- I don't know. His his ability is cool. Like his delivery sounds cool. But lyrics, oh, not, not really there. I feel like the reason why he's so popular is he just has that good looking like uh, white boy charm. <laughs> like yeah. I think I think that's what takes him so far. The kid on the 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 football team nah nah bro that that man isn't playing football bro track and field (laughs) oh the cute guy on the track and field team who is too cool to talk to me (laughs) he's got he's got that that charm and i feel like that's what takes him in music that's why people are like oh this guy's so palatable like oh and he can rap too oh my god he's so cool i feel like it's like the guys want to be him and then the girls are just like yeah, but no guy wants to be him. No guy I know wants to be him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand bro, who he's selling to. Bro, I had a crazy conversation. So I was like, I asked my friend a funny question. Like, oh, if you could live, let's say you were like roommates, like college roommates with a rapper, who would you want to live with? And then the, the dude I asked this, he said like Jack Harlow. And I was Fuck. like, Bro, your room is going to be smelling like wet sock the entire year. Like, <laughs> like there ain't that boy. I'm sure that boy stinks. Okay. <laughs> he just looks like the type to like, like go outside, go on a run. Yeah. You know, it's a track and field vibe. <laughs> and then he just like leaves that thing in the, the laundry hamper. Just like smells like rank, bro. <laughs> 
Jack Harlow is in it for sure. But you know what the thing is, though? I feel like a lot of artists, once they get a following, they have to become a, a franchise like McDonald's. Yeah, you know what I they mean? have to. Because that's how they maintain the sort of re- like relevance. That's or how whatever. you get the bag. That's how you get the bag and how you become like a household name. You have to. I guess it's more reflexive of the industry rather than the individual artist. Yeah, I mean, I would too. I mean, of course, anyone, not yeah. anyone, but a lot of people would sell out. Most people, most people yeah. would. I feel like a lot of these people, it's not, they don't just care about music and the art, but they care about other things, which is like natural as well. Like, shit, I want money too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like yeah. you're, you're a software engineer, but like, you're not, that's not all you care for, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Like there's right. more. Right. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of unfair to, like, hate on yeah. these people, but... Yeah. But I'm we can hate we on their... Okay, we can hate on their music, though. We can hate on their music because that's explicitly what they're putting out. And we can say, yeah. no, this ain't it. You used to be so much better. <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. True, actually. Cool. That, that was a good discussion. I feel like we, we covered some good names. Damn, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that that at, at K-pop. That was crazy, bro. But am I... Hold on. But am I wrong, though? Do, 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 do. <laughs> I can't, I'm not wrong at all. Like, K-pop is so... I'm not saying it's not good, but it's manufactured. There's no way around that. Yep. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, <laughs> just I'm, leaving me out to dry. I know. I'm, I'm being so fake, and I, like, smoked on all the other ones. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. K-pop, uh, I like it. <laughs> I like so, it, like, I guess. I feel like every summer up to high school, colleges kind of has, like, an uh, album or a song that kind of captures... I don't know, everyone for the summer. Like yeah. when when we graduated from high school, I think Kendrick released Humble or something. Oh yeah. Damn, yeah. he released Damn. Yeah. And yeah. The song of the summer was Humble. Right. So like what are some like life defining moments or big moments in your life that have a soundtrack to them? Like a song. Yeah. You know. Only recently where I'm like keeping in touch, but usually I like find out about albums and artists like well past the date. Um, yeah. So I feel like my own experiences are like not like the timelines and whatever do not match up at all. Um, but <laughs> I remember, um, do you know the rapper Kyle? Yeah, of course. I I kind of like the flow, especially as like earlier projects. It's just like he's just like a nerdy kid, like trying to rap. I always listen to that the summer after like high school um especially I started like work I I had like a little mini like internship that summer and uh I was just like I would take the metro every day and I'd be like listen to that and like listening to the rap and I'm like yeah 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 like I'd feel so cool I feel like that's like a very defining thing for me um and that's also around the time when I really started getting into rap as well because I guess I I feel like you start to develop your taste in music once you, I mean, maybe in the old days, it's like when you actually buy your first like album or record. But like for us, it's like when you make your Spotify account or Pandora account, whatever. Um, I feel like that's like the start. That's the inception of like your music taste, because up till then, you're probably just like mainly listening to pop, or at least that's what it was for me, like whatever's on the radio. Um, and I feel like I, I think I got that like maybe like 2015 honestly which was like two years before I graduated high school that was like when I really started getting into rap yeah I mean it's kind of funny how like I don't know how you found Kyle you actually turned me on to Kyle like Mm -hmm. I I didn't even know about him until you showed me Mm -hmm. and I I wasn't a huge fan I liked a few of his songs like I was it I Spy is that him? yeah that was his like main hit yeah I Spy was cool but um (laughs) I mean like (laughs) I Spice, they should do a collab. But, um, <laughs> I remember like the first time I heard To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. So before, like up until I was 16, maybe 15, I was only listening to like the top 10, 20 tracks on the radio. And if it wasn't yeah. in the top 10, 20, I didn't know about it. Right. And I made my first Spotify account, I guess around the same time you did. Yeah. And I came into school one day and I had some... uh uh, upperclassmen friends who are really into like rap and music mm. and one went on to be a music major major after you graduated mm. and they turned me on to frank ocean's orange mm. the pimp a butterfly 
Damn, they cultured you. <laughs> they turned me on to 3005. Or, or, mm. Remember the internet by Donald Glover? Yeah. Like, they turned me on to, like, all these rappers. And it just blew my mind. Like, my yeah. idea of music just... Doesn't it blow your mind? Because up until that point, you have only list you only ever listened to McDonald's, and then you find <laughs> like you find like this fancy sushi restaurant. Like that's like the, that's what it feels like, like. Yeah, it, it's exactly what it's like. It's like oh my god, these guys have their own albums with their own like complicated like art and messaging and like um, stylistic choices. And it's like you don't hear that on the radio. You just don't. But why? Because I feel like. Everyone I know likes those songs. You know what I mean? Man, I think just catchiness just trumps all. And mm. that's what the radio is for. It's like, oh, how, how, what, I'm going to play a song that the most amount of people know or will catch on to. And so that will just be based on catchiness, unfortunately. Yeah. Which, bro, Jack Harlow's first class, like, bro, the, the chorus came first class. It's not even <laughs> him. Um, no, I hated that song. <laughs> Ass. I listed off a few of the defining albums for me. Maybe not summer songs, but like, yeah. what are some albums that like just changed your taste or mind? Yeah, you know, this one, you know, to step out of rap a little bit, like, I think the first thing I really got into was interestingly enough, like Sam Smith. <laughs> no shot, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, and I think that's definitely wired me to have this inbuilt like love for good vocalists um because his original stuff has like amazing vocals and like he he does regardless of like what you think about him like he has like a really really good voice he can like do these really beautiful like vocal runs and uh his songs like his ballad type songs are so good it's also very sad music yeah i feel like that was my first those were like my first kinds of albums that i really enjoyed like um and i think the reason why that was like my first is because i'm just coming off of like only ever listening to pop my whole life so uh, whatever i'm listening to next is probably going to be kind of like pop adjacent um, yeah so that's probably why um nowadays and like back to the mcdonald's discussion i think he makes mcdonald's music now like it's just very pop like at the body shop doing something i'm calling <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, man's man's definitely turned to turned to the McDonald's side, but uh, man, his original stuff is is very good. Um, and those are like those really did shape my music taste until I started finding like rap, um, and then listening to people like Kyle and like and Chance the Rapper, Amine. Um, those were like those were maybe the first few like rap uh, rap albums I really really got into. So did you listen to uh, Daniel Caesar after Sam Smith? Because it seems like that would be yes. normal. Yeah, yeah. That, I think I found that towards the end of high school. I, I found that pretty, like, later than maybe when his, like, Freudian album came out. Maybe, like, a year later. Yeah, um, before he blew and, up or something. Yeah, yeah. And I, I fell in love with it. Like, it was, I think that's a very unique one um, where I was like, I love this type of music and not only that but I loved that may have also been inspiration for me like trying to make my own music in that style of like R&B um, a lot of the music I've been working on lately is like very very like directly kind of inspired by that style of music um, so I think that really shaped my taste a lot so did your parents uh, listen to a lot of music when you're growing yeah, up, or? that's the interesting thing because I think a lot of people develop their music taste from their parents. Um, for me, it's like my parents are gonna listen to like Bollywood and stuff. So, okay. uh, so and shit, I like that. I like that music too, and I'll I'll listen to that. Um, there there's some bangers. There's some bangers out there. Okay, I'll, I'll get you. I'll get you hooked. Maybe that can be like a segment. Like yo, I'll get you hooked <laughs> to some. Uh, yeah, I, I want to see you. <laughs> Oh, and then you play me some Ethiopian songs so I can go. You're already better than me. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Most people will t like adopt the taste of their parents. But for me, I guess I did. But I've had to find my like own music taste like 
based on, I guess, what's on the radio. And uh, and then after getting a Spotify account, then I'm able to develop it like way more. But yeah. 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 I haven't I was never like able to really adopt fully like my my parents like music interests because it doesn't cover anything that I'm used to that I'm like hearing normally in like day to day life. So, yeah. How about you? My mom listened to a lot of like it was a Christian radio station. I forgot the name of it. But almost all the songs sound the same to me on there. So it's just kind of like mm-hmm. country esque, a lot of wor- worship type music. Like, like you have you seen or been to a modern day church where they all kind of just wear the same thing, where they all feel I, like they're cool? I haven't been to one myself, but like I know what you're describing. Yeah. Like, is they all have the same vibe? And there's not, no dis- disrespect. It's just like, like it's the, not the my church- take. Is it like church choir, like gospel, the gospel type? Or is that no, it's not even gospel. No. That would be so yeah. much better. It's just like. <laughs> That'd be like some Kanye shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, but it's serious. more like, it's hard for me to describe. It's like, it's very country influenced and just um, oh. general white girl singing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like sure. a lesser version of Taylor Swift, like that's the kind of vibe I get from it. <laughs> Taylor mid. <laughs> so I never liked that. But my dad. Have you seen or heard of 50 Cent's album, Ready to Die? It's where I've he... not. I've, yeah, I've not. Well, you've probably seen it or heard a few songs from it. Like, yeah. my dad was really into rap uh, ever oh, since cool. I was a kid, and I hated it. I oh. hated rap up until I was, like, 18, honestly. I hated rap. I could not stand it. And, honestly, uh, yeah. yeah. Man, when I think about that, like... In some sense, it kind of makes sense. Like, at least up till age, like, 10, 11, 12, it's kind of like, yo, what is this man yelling about? Like, oh, the op's trying to chase me down. And <laughs> Rap can be pretty, like, abrasive. Yeah. And I feel like for a kid, it's like, shit, you just want to, you, you just want to bump some cocoa melon. <laughs> you feel me? Like, Johnny, Johnny, yes, Papa. <laughs> so, like, like hey, that's the level hey, you're shark. at. Yeah, like that's exactly. that's the level. Like you want something. I guess as a kid, you kind of want McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Every kid wants McDonald's. Every kid, they everyone wants their Happy Meal, bro. <laughs> uh, you're very right when you say that. You have to kind of like, it wasn't even 18 for me, like 16. Like where you kind of, I feel like you learned maybe to listen more to music because I was yeah. a very passive listener up to that point. Right. You know, so and it. De- Okay, for you, think about it. Did it coincide with around the time that you made like a a Spotify account or like YouTube music, whatever you use? Like within a year or two, yeah. Within a year or two, right? Yeah, that's exactly like the inception of like you cultivating your own like music tastes. Yeah, pretty cool. Actually, SoundCloud is where it started for me. Mm, Like, were you SoundCloud? Were you SoundCloud kid or no? Nah, you know, I, I like listen to a lot of the songs that would blow up on SoundCloud and then be put on like Spotify, like, oh, like XXX Tentacion or like that. that shit. Um, but no, nah, no, nah, I, I don't think, uh, yeah, I wouldn't consider myself a SoundCloud head. <laughs> you missed out. Like those were yeah. the days where like some of the best songs were from SoundCloud. Dude, I heard. Yeah, that that feels like a unique era. I feel like my parents kind of had a limited uh influence on my music mm-hmm. actually that's not until i was older their influence influences slow, slowly crept on me and mm-hmm. i find myself liking some of the stuff they do mm-hmm. but like when i was younger maybe i was more rebellious but it was just like i was digging for my own stuff you know mm-hmm. that's, is, that the, that's really cool. is that the case for you or not really no not really i think i always enjoy um hindi music or like bollywood music because i'm not hearing that on the day-to-day um it's like not something i like necessarily like tap into too much um although one day i, I want to make like a full like hindi song like me only speaking hindi in the entire song and like making really it, like yeah like making like a there are a lot of like really good like beautiful instrumentals um in hindi music just because the instruments are different um and yeah, I want to make a banger. <laughs> that could be fire. Be cool, yeah. Yeah, I could see, I could see like your friends even liking that. Mm, true. Because people true. are more open to like um, songs from other countries, just because we Definitely. all we're like internet kids. So, right, right, yeah. Which is why people like the McDonald's of Korea right now, but 
<laughs> yeah. Did you find yourself like for me, especially in college and in high school too, but you weren't allowed to listen to music in the hallways. But like whenever I would leave the house or be in public, I would have music. Like I, I would have a headset on with music on it and I could be uh -huh. going to giant or what, whatever. Yes. But like it was more comfortable for me to walk around with music than not for some reason. It felt weird to walk mm. around without music. Like I need a theme track to everything I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's no, I can definitely relate to that, dude. There's certain times when it's like you really you want to like march to an anthem. Like the first time you're gonna get gonna confess to a girl, you like put on an anthem and then she rejects <laughs> you, and then you play like Frank Ocean on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> all right wait okay you're calling your parents and you want to tell them like yo i have like six months to live like i got i got this crazy case of ligma and it's like it's gonna take me out um uh, what song are you playing that's a good question metro booming wants some more <laughs> do you have do you have one right now <laughs> oh i got it Right foot up, left foot slide. <laughs> the two C ratio. shuffle. <laughs> I'm playing two C slide, bro. That maybe that's why we keep hating on this man. Like he keeps making McDonald's music. Maybe that's what his music is for to like ease the pain of these difficult ligma like conversations. <laughs> Probably like some sort of classical music. To be honest, like I feel like. Beat ovens 11 7. <laughs> Like, bum, oh, bum, bum, bum. Oh, I'd play Furley's. <laughs> I have Ligma. <laughs> and it's contagious. No, 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 no. I'm going to die in six months. <laughs> you probably got it too. Because, like I said, it's contagious. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> you better pay for my flight tickets. <laughs> You're not getting life insurance because you can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the soundtrack that's the answer that's the answer or 2c slide perfect. honestly those are two heavy hitters <laughs> or you could blend them you know <laughs> just... uh, they're mixed <laughs> your right foot up your no 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 left foot slide no 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 all right on that note that outro music that fur elise mixed with 2c slide <laughs> uh we're gonna end it um, hope you guys enjoyed and let us know if you want any other topics, like you want our opinions <laughs> on anything. If not, we're going to be back with the same bullshit until you care. Uh, yeah. Rap. Yeah. We're going to keep on making noise until you guys care. We're going to keep calling out people that are McDonald's. Okay. We don't <laughs> care. We don't care if we lose like 80% of the audience. Cause like 80% of zero still zero, bro. I, I studied, I studied four years to become a math major and so, uh, yeah, you know, you're, you guys aren't hurting our metrics. We're not afraid to offend you. Um, maybe that's why we are rap rejects. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end it. Yeah, that's a good and way I'm, to end it, actually. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, see you later. Rap rejects out. Bye.